We want to introduce you to a doctor who holds the key to Colorado's own fountain of youth. Amen. It's not something you'll find in a secret po potion. The magic starts with a physician who has focused his entire practice on rejuvenation on two areas of the body, the face and the neck. The Center for the Aesthetic Facial Surgery was founded by Dr. Michael Menenkoff, the recipient of America's Top Physicians Award for Facial Plastic Surgery for the years 2003 through 2010. Now, he was also named one of the top doctors in the global directory of Who's Who for 2010 and was featured in United Airlines Sky Concierge magazine at one of the best of the best. We're happy to welcome back the good doctor, Dr. Michael Menenkoff. Nice to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you tonight. So you limit your practice to the face and neck. Why is that important for viewers who are considering this? Well, two things, Denise. You know, statistically, if you look at... Uh, in the United States today, about 90% of the plastic surgery done is breast augmentation and body liposuction, which means that the really good general plastic surgeons are spending 90% of their time doing those two procedures and 10% of the time doing everything else, which means that probably 5% of the time they're on the face and the neck. I'm a facial plastic surgeon, a head and neck surgeon. I'm from here to here, and I'm there 100% of the time, so this is all that I do. And the real issue with that is that the learning curve for a lot of these facial plastic surgery procedures is really, really shallow. It takes a long time to do. If, you know, if the breasts aren't perfectly symmetric or the liposuction is a little bit uh, lumpy, bumpy, no one's going to see it because it's under clothes. But everything on the face and neck is mm. out there, and you see every little bit of imperfection. I had a uh, professor, a very, very well-respected facial plastic surgery professor when I was a resident, and I'd taken him pictures of what one of my rhinoplasties, maybe my 10th or 15th rhinoplasty, that I thought was pretty good and showed him the picture to see what he thought and kind of looked at the pictures and then he turned to me and he said, you know, Mike, you're really not going to understand how to do a rhinoplasty until you've done at least 500. Wow. And at the time I thought, wow, what, what an arrogant boob. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I know you've done a lot and I've done a few, but yeah. come on, this is pretty good, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, it was interesting because my 100th was better than that one. And when I hit 500, all of a sudden things started making sense to me that really hadn't made sense to me before. So he was right. And my 500th was better than my 100th. My 1,000th was better than my wow. 500. Now that I'm into the thousands, they keep getting better and better. You learn from each thing, but it takes a long time to get there. So yeah. doing a lot very important. Yeah, great education, great history, and also we should point out that you've worked here for 17 years in Colorado, right. and that's important because you know the look and the feel of Colorado. It, it really is. You know, yeah. the, the culture of Colorado is just different. I mean, it's it's why we live here. Colorado's awesome, mm -hmm. um, but it's different than people who go to plastic surgeons in Southern California, Beverly Hills, and Manhattan and New York, Dallas, Texas, oftentimes they're looking for something that's big and bold and stylized. They want people to notice that they had something done. And that's why you see those pictures of people whose faces are stretched a little too tight, whose eyes look a little cat-like, whose lips are too big, or whose breasts are way too big for their body. In Colorado, that's not the way that people want it. The people, people that come to see me come to see me because they want to look like a younger, more refreshed, healthier version of themselves, mm -hmm. not like somebody else, still like themselves. And that's really what we strive for. And I think it's one of the reasons, you know, I, I grew up in Northern California and trained in San Francisco, and one of the reasons that, that I moved here is that this really fit the way that, that I feel as well. I, I think that that's what looks good, that natural, healthy, refreshed yes. look. And I tell most of my patients, if when you see your friends and family two, three weeks after your surgery, if the first question they ask is, hey, who did your surgery? Yeah, what have you done then, to yourself? Then we've, then we've yeah. failed in that. And you what, what really happens is, is that people tell them how good they look, but yeah. never think that they had surgery. Two words you said, natural and refreshed, really important, those two words, 303-792-3838. Yeah. You also take special interest in creating the possibility of them going back to, to work early so there's right. not a lot of downtime right. yeah and it's changed so much in the last 20 to 30 years too you know facial plastic surgery used to be reserved for two groups of people the rich and the very rich because those were the people that could have their surgery stay at home for three months till they really looked pretty good again have people take care of them do their shopping and their errands for them but that's not the kind of people that that uh, that are my patients the, the people that I see they work hard they put their money aside and they've got maybe a week if I'm lucky maybe 10 days till they really need to be back at work oftentimes much less than that. And so we've really looked at developing procedures that will accomplish the same kind of thing that these longer recovery procedures do, but do it in a much, much shorter amount of time. All right, let's take a look at some before and after yeah. shots. I want to see your work. 
You bet. This is this is a gal that came in, and this is essentially for a facelift. She's got some some jowls, some sagging in her neck. You can see the heaviness underneath her chin, a little bit of flattening of her mid face, and we did what essentially is a two-hour facelift, two hours worth of surgery. When she came back in a week to get her stitches out, riding up the elevator to the office. People riding with her didn't realize that she'd had anything done before. And again, you can see on the after, great results. The fullness underneath the chin is gone. The jowls are gone. She's got more youthful fullness put back up to her cheeks. And the other part of this is that she still looks like herself. Mm -hmm, and again, she, does. she doesn't look like somebody else. She just looks, looks like a refreshed, healthy version of herself, again, in two weeks' time. Another person, same idea, a lot of fullness to her neck, jowls, a little bit of um, heaviness again to the bottom part of the face. And, and this is afterwards um, on the right-hand side where you can really see the jowls are gone, the neck is smooth, nice full cheeks again. Again, if you compare the two, she still looks like herself. She just looks like a refreshed, healthier a little bit younger version of herself. She looks beautiful, yeah. yeah. And same yeah. thing here. You can see on the after, when, especially when you compare the side view, of the neck, the before and after. Again, a, a nice, healthy, relaxed uh, look. Doesn't look stretch pulled or done. Nobody knew she had this done. You know, when we sat in front of her before and after pictures two months after surgery and we all were kind of ooing and aahing and how good it looked, you know, her comment, and this was great, was that the, no one really said anything about it other than the fact that when she goes into a store now and checks out, they call her Miss instead of Ma'am. Aw, so how sweet. That's that a great good. story. Yeah, yeah she yeah. has to love you. So for the first time, a consultation. And quickly explain to me what that's like. You bet. Um, you know, we spend a lot of time with our initial consultation, usually in the office for over an hour. And, and the reason, really, a, a couple of reasons. Number one is that people don't come to see us because I'm just because I'm a technically good surgeon. There are a lot of very technically very good surgeons out there, but we spend a lot of time that first time getting to know you so that we really understand what it is that bothers you, <clears throat> how much time you have for recovery, uh, what we're going to be able to do so that we really w that we can come up with options. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people will come in to see me. They've seen a couple different doctors, and it's interesting to hear what the other doctors have recommended, which really isn't at all what I would recommend. Um, and I think in part they said, you know, at the other at the other offices, either they didn't see the physician or they saw a physician for just a couple mm -hmm. of minutes. And I think that's really important. Um, well, and also your technology. You Absolutely. spend a lot of money. You invest in good technology. Absolutely. You know, we do a lot, computer imaging on almost everybody mm -hmm. um, where we take a picture of you, put it on the computer, and with some pretty sophisticated software, as you can see on the screen now, we can make some changes to show you what it is that you'll look like afterwards mm -hmm. and give you an idea about the before and after. And the importance of this is that oftentimes people will come in and there'll be three or four different options, and we can show you here's what you'll look like with one option, here's what you'll look like with another, and, and that way you can make a pretty educated decision as to, to what, what is the best option for you. And it all starts with quality skin care. You really stress that, don't you? It's, it's really important. You know, as a surgeon, I, I like to stretch and pull and move things around, but, I, you know, my office staff oftentimes kind of hits me in the back of the head to remind me about the importance of this. And this is really, really important. Good quality skin care makes a huge difference. Let's take a look at a um, picture here. And this is, this is Brenda. Now, this is Brenda a, a little over a year ago. Um, and uh, again, very, very pretty. And this is her oh, yeah. now. And all the only difference, all we did between the before and after here is good quality skin care and a little bit of filler. And that's all that's happened. And she's actually wearing less makeup in this picture than she was in, in the picture beforehand. She looks and great. She really does. And you take that, good quality skin care, you put that then on top of some of these minimally invasive procedures, and now you've got a package mm. that looks really, really good. Well, dang it, I didn't wash my face last night when I went to bed, and now I'm feeling <laughs> so <you> guilty. <laughs> but you have a great special. I want to tell the viewers about it, and it's always nice to see you. Thank you. Again, the Center for Aesthetic Facial Surgery offers the latest procedures that eliminates the lengthy downtime and gives you that natural, more youthful look that you truly do desire. Call Dr. Middenkoff's office. His number is 303-792-3838 to schedule your complimentary initial consultation and free computer imaging. The number again is 303-792-3838. And when you mention Colorado & Company, you'll receive 10% discount on all cosmetic surgery procedures and $10 per unit for any Botox treatment. All procedures must be booked and completed by the end of May. Here's the number to call. It's 303-792-3838. Learn so much more online at thefaceexperts.com and the Center for Aesthetic Facial Surgery paid for this segment.